Hi! I always wanted to do this, and today is the day I can finally do it. Today! I don't have too much time, so I'm making something very simple, because I want to thank you guys for 90,000 subscribers. This is actually my second take of the video, because I messed up everything, so yay. Let's try this again. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here for a long time, for sticking around, for clicking that button, which oddly enough helps us YouTubers a lot. And yeah, I wanted to do some things in in relation with this video as well. You know, you gotta do something special for your for your uh, for your 90k. Which I actually I, I always say this, but I actually thought I was gonna reach this a lot earlier when I was like starting out because my growth was so super fast for a while. But then it like kind of stopped, and now we finally reached it. So it, it feels it feels more earned now, I guess, in a way. But what I wanna do, what I wanna do, is you're gonna see in a second. I've already done it now once, but like, I have burgers. But those are not just any burgers. Those are, well, technically they're maggot burgers. Well, they're buffalo worm burgers. So they're being sold as insect burgers in Germany right now, but they're not really insect burgers. Also, by the way, I'm skill shot now. Just kidding, I'm not. I, I will never be. I am. I just got that for free. Uh, and these insect burgers, like, I don't know, they're like, they're basically just worms and soy as far as I understand it. And I wanted to try them on camera and give you a bit of a reaction. Now, as I said, unfortunately, this is the second take because uh, of certain circumstances, so I've already done it once. But as you haven't seen the first take, you might as well get my reaction again. And I, di I didn't know what kind of reaction you're going to get going into this, so this is what it looks like. It just looks like a, yeah, a dry burger, really. And, and here we go. Right. And even 20 minutes later, the taste is still the same. <laughs> Unfortunately, my reaction is not particularly shocked or disgusted because it, it really wasn't bad at all. I, when I, f I first ate it, I actually thought it, it almost tastes like, like a burger, really. Mm. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't have been able to tell that it's, it's actually not a burger. Like an, a normal burger, but now I can tell a little bit more. Now that it's, a, it's been standing here a little bit longer, it's been a little, it's more dry and more crispy, I guess. So it doesn't taste quite like a normal burger anymore. But at the same time, I would never be able to tell that it's like something completely different. I think it's just like a a dry burger, I guess. So yeah, that was a little bit of an experiment. Way too expensive to regularly eat it, but I think a cool concept because eating like insects is significantly like they have a ton of protein and they are way easier to feed than than normal like meat so in concept is really cool because it's like if this becomes more marketable and people like it it could technically become like a super cheap accessible source of protein which is hard enough as is of course like you know some people go the other way and just, just go for uh, soy and stuff, but I think it's it's nice to have some variation. I think insects are something like I don't even know if, if if vegetarians would necessarily be opposed to eating insects the same degree as they are opposed to eating meat. Depends on the individual, I guess. Same as like pescatarians or something. So I think this is some some interesting idea, and yeah, it's not bad at all actually, which is cool. Yeah, and outside of that, I also wanted to do a Q and A. So we're gonna do that now. I just made like a mini Q and A. I'm not gonna show all the questions on screen. I'm just gonna go through them. Again, <laughs> and yeah, I, I, will, I will answer as, as many as possible. The first one was from Peter, and it was more about like matchmaking and, and bands and stuff. I cannot tell you anything about that. I'm sorry because I'm not high risk. Uh, I think matchmaking is going to make some. Well, it's, it's going to be different with crossplay, but we'll have to see what that really means if that's better or worse or whatever. Do you think Nua will ever be meet, me, meta? Uh, nope, she will never be meta. She will always be bottom tier. Of course not. I, Nua has been meta in the past, and I think she will be meta again. It's just some metas aren't that favorable for her. 
And I think Hyrus tries to keep her around not too strong tiers because having to deal with Nua in a very high tier, like as a very strong guard, is very frustrating for your entire team because you get nuked by the ults all the time. And that's just not fun. So I don't think I don't think she would stay in like S plus for very long if she ever got there. Do you think role select Q will be anything like Leak's draft pick? The draft pick uh, where you can Q specifically for a particular role and then have ordered pick and bats. No, it's not quite the same because you have to define two roles and I guess if you don't get those two roles, you can also get other roles outside of that. So it's, it's not quite the same. It's similar enough, but it, saying if it's anything like that is, is hard to say in this, in this very context. Aside from Merlin, what gods are you most looking forward to in season six? Uh, also kind of hard to say because I really, I'm more looking forward to like say in a, a new assassin because I just like playing assassins and I'm looking forward to a specific god. I think the African Pantheon thing is cool, but Set and Horus are also cool, and the unique effect on Human Gunder with the knockup immunity is also cool, so yeah, I'm looking forward to all of them so far and just gotta see how they turn out. I think I'm least interested in Merlin just from the perspective of him being a mage and me not really playing mages that much. Where's Waldo? Uh, controlling the world according to, to Black Mirror. What would you change to the balance done Season 6 solo lane? There's a few questions regarding that. Uh, I think it's it's going to be interesting how it develops anyway, so I wouldn't change anything for now, and we're going to see what happens with all these changes that are coming. Burgers or hot dogs? 100% burgers. I'm, I'm not like, I'm not a big fan of sausages, so yeah, burgers all the way. Any, uh, maybe with the exception of like Danish hot dogs. Danish hot dogs, like the real, real good ones can be good, but burgers are more reliable. Any new insight on Arthur now? Um, some stuff regarding his stand switching and skill ceiling. Uh, not much new insight, not much since since last uh, videos, basically. I think Arthur doesn't exactly have the highest skill ceiling. Sure, he doesn't have the lowest, and we've seen that. A lot of people have struggled with him, but I think once you get this basic combos down, he's actually very straightforward. But yeah, I, I like it. Um, we'll see if they change him so he gets a higher skill ceiling, like so you can juke with your basics and stuff like that. But right now you can't. And I think that the new mechanics are, are good for the game mostly. I think they, uh, they are interesting, the new stand switching, stuff like that. So I, I'd like to see more like that. Then there's a question that I literally don't understand. And then two questions. How do you feel about the soul line changes? I think it's cool. I don't think it's underwhelming at all. Movement speed and MP5 are the bonuses, uh, which I think can be really strong. For the right guard in the right situation especially especially mp5 for some guards is, is very strong so you can spam your self heal and stuff like that uh, if you ever don't get blue for example and do you feel that the worry buff is sufficient and yes i think that the worry buff is sufficient and i don't think that guardians will exclusively rule the solo lane i think that there might be some guardians that still work well in solo but I think the new objective will put a lot of pressure on them to to do more and not just be passive and farm with Guardian's Blessing. And the new Warrior's Blessing buff as well, of course. So I think I think the changes for Solo are good overall. Uh, then there's a question regarding the new Speed Elixir. Uh, the question is formulated a bit weirdly. Like basically, is, uh, what I can say about this Elixir is that I think it will be used in various different ways in regards to what you build after. Some people will build another damaging item, some people will build movement speed damage hybrids, uh, and some people will build like complementary, item, complementary items to the, whatever they have already, and some people will build more defense items. So I don't think there's an easy answer to that one. It's just completely down to the, to the situations. Cats or dogs? Both. I think the problem with a dog for me personally right now is if I have to like go for a walk three times a day I, I wouldn't be able to fit that in i just don't have the time to do that my my life is busy and stressful enough as it is so i wouldn't be able to really take care of a dog which is why i would opt for a cat for at least a while but when i'm older i would definitely opt for a dog as well and i i'd love to have a dog and a cat because i think dogs and cats are very complementary personalities so i think it's really fun to have one of each or, or multiple uh, when you can afford it and when you have space for them and everything of course so there's a few circumstances that are required to be fulfilled first but i would i would never be like this is one 
and, and I don't like this one or whatever, because animals are cool in general. Birds are cool too, so yeah. Uh, question regarding the last hit from Kali, the fact that it's too easy to take it accidentally and her not getting healed, uh, and if sh there should be any buffs to that, and I don't think that should be any buffs to that, because if you buff Kali's ultimate, she snowballs even more, and what you want to do with Kali is giving him a, like a level uh, playstyle throughout instead of buffing her ultimate specifically. Uh, her passive specifically, sorry, because she doesn't she doesn't need more snowball. Uh, do they think they should add more cursed items that have negative stats and that, you know, then get stronger positive stats to balance that out? Like the, the masks that we have. Uh, I think we have enough of those. I think maybe like one or two more is nice, but at the end of the day, they make things very hard to balance because it's always going to be specific gods that are way too good with them. Like, for example, if you had a, a cursed item with a ton of mana, then suddenly Kukul Khan would be super strong and the item would be adjusted just for him uh, and other things like that. So I, I really think we shouldn't go overboard with those, as interesting as they are. How many kills would Ao Kuang steal if Ao Kuang would steal kills? All the kills, because he would turn into his dragon and fly around and steal more kills. If you could rework one god, who would it be and what would the change to your abilities be? I think this would still, despite its changes, have to be Loki. I think the two is boring. Like, change the two, maybe buff him in other places, nerf him in other places, just adjust him all around, but change the two so it's not that boring to play as and play against. How sexy is Kuzumbo on a level of perfect to perfect? Perfect square? Like, perfect, perfect, perfect? Why would everyone? Uh, why does everyone put Kukul Khan and not Quetzalcoatl in their game? I don't know. I'm trying to learn Arthur, and I absolutely suck. Even though I main solo lane, but since you already uploaded two videos about him, I think I must have uploaded like five, six videos about him at this point. <laughs> yeah, how good is Witchblade on Arthur, and does Shogun proc the passive? I think Shogun's works with the passive, but I haven't tested it. It should though, technically. Uh, Witchblade. Maybe, maybe it doesn't work, though, because attack speed reduction, I think, doesn't work. So I'm hard to say, but I think it should. And Witchblade is good whenever you need Witchblade, if you need it for the passive and if you don't have anyone else to build it. That's that's the selling point of Witchblade. It doesn't really matter if it's Arthur or any other warrior. Of course, there are some that like may fit it in better, but that's not the point of Witchblade. Should Discordia ever get a buff? No. I don't think any balance changes should be done to guards uh, before Season 6 is out to just see where they are afterwards, because Discordia right now is an A, unless you're like, talking about like super low-tier guards. What do you think the main impact of LXD will be? Uh, again, the same thing. I think it, it just completely depends on the situation. Um, and we will see a little bit of different playstyle from some guards that way. So it's going to be very interesting. Like, see, for example, if Poseidon can like go into more movement speed, things like that. And likewise, there's some, some more questions about changed items in general. Uh, I will skip that for now. Like I said, I don't think I can discuss all of these in depth in a Q and a So I'd rather have like specific videos designated to that. With the change to Book of Thoth being more mana dependent for power, do you think they will add more items like Ethereal Staff to increase the amount of mana you have? Probably not. I think that will be exclusive to Ethereal. Do you think 70 health will be enough to bring warriors back to solo? It just feels insulting. I think there's a lot more happening than just 70 health for warriors. Like Some warriors get specific changes as well, like Hercules, for example. Also, Warrior's Blessing was buffed, which is huge. Also, there's a new objective that requires you to be aggressive and have enough damage to secure that, which is what I think will primi primarily push the Guardians out of solo. Not completely, but will bring warriors back. So I think you have to look at the overall picture and not just this one part of the changes to warriors if you want to see if they're coming back. Pineapple on pizza or not pineapple on pizza? The same question as the cats or dogs. Like, normally, I will not put pineapple on a pizza. I... I don't eat pizza that much these days anyways, but when I eat pizza, I want one that's like, I don't know, calorie heavy, primarily. Enough protein. So pineapple is not my priority there. But at the same time, if I'm like, if I'm like on a beach, or if, if I, you know, if a person's on a beach and they want to eat a pineapple on a pizza, I'm not going to judge them. Like, let people eat what they want to eat. There's... That's like, we have a free world. We only have a free country, we have a free world where you, can, where you can eat what you want with what you want. And some combinations will be disgusting to some people and fantastic to others. Like, for example, uh, apple and peanut butter. Some people love it, some people hate it. Is, is one right and the other one wrong? No. 
No, just let people live. And let them live if they don't like pineapple and let them live if they like pineapple. No, no difference. The ones that are fighting over it are the problem. There's worse things to fight about than pineapple. Yes or no question. Do you think Thana needs an early nerf and buff late game? Uh, no, I think he doesn't need an early nerf because he's supposed to be an early game guard. Uh, might need a buff to his late game. On the other hand, Thanatos might be one of those assassins that could be very good in solo with the upcoming changes because he can secure that objective relatively well. So hard to say where will he be afterwards and maybe then he might even need nerfs to his early. Is the book tree completely garbage now? No, I don't think so. Any future for us Nemesis players? Hopefully at some point. Who would you like to get the next tier 5? Um, I'm biased, I willish still, but she's got some cool skins now, so maybe maybe Pele. Pele could actually do a lot with a tier 5. I just, I don't know. This is one of the gods I play a lot. It's simple. Is Tupac still alive? Absolutely, and the reptilians rule us all. Do you have any pets? Not right now. How long do you see yourself playing Smite? Also, hello. Really depends on how the game's going. I, I think it's so hard to say. I think Smite obviously has its ups and downs, highs and lows. And some days you love it and some days you hate it. And it, it depends a lot on, for example, how Project Olympus is going. Is if, if Hyrus is able to continuously like make changes to the game that make it feel better. It depends on what other games are coming out. If there's anything that catches my attention for long enough. And is worth it in terms of making content about it as well. So, yeah, it it depends. It, I, can't, I can't put a number on that at all. But I'm not going to say no to any opportunity outside of Smite if there's a good one, uh, as well as I'm not going to drop Smite the moment there is anything else coming up that I might be interested in. So, yeah, just got to see. What type of music do you listen to? Just don't say everything. Uh, I want to say everything here, but let's just say a lot of like heavy music, like deathcore, metalcore, hardcore, whatever, you name it, that kind of section. Then a lot of acoustic music, a lot of pop as well, a lot of rock, a lot of um, rap. Uh, not so much like, not so much the new school of rap, I suppose, not so much mumble rap, but, but rap in general. Um, not so much electronic music, some electronic music, but more specific songs than like everything. Uh, some jazz actually as well, and, and that kind of stuff. I, th I think it's really enjoyable, but not, not too much, but just most of the time, like I find like one or two songs, I'm like, oh yeah, oh, this is good. And then uh, not so much classic or like regional music. For the Germans, among you, Schlager is absolutely terrible. And anything related to Schlager that was ever played in a club is absolutely horrible. And that's why I hate half of the clubs in Germany. So, yeah. What anime have you watched? Um, none, aka Dragon Ball Z and Pokemon. I don't know if that counts. Depends. Do you think that ideally Warriors and Guardians would have shifting metas in solo lane? I mean, I think a non stacked meta is generally fine. I don't think Guardians should be the overwhelming force in the solo most of the time. You think an item tree that increases CC would be damaging to the game? Yes, absolutely. I don't think that should be a thing. Smite has more CC than most other games. What we have um, more of as well is CC immunity and tools to avoid CC, but we don't need more CC or longer CC. Do you think there's a huge skill gap between console and PC? I used to think that, but now I'm not sure anymore and we will find out soon, I guess. I think the issue is still like turning around with different speeds and stuff like that. I, I'm just going to play Bakasura and run around console players and they can literally not, like, even if they could, unless they have super high sensitivity, they can't hit you, which is really annoying. But skill gap wise, no. Nah. I, I, I think that's closing more and more. Depends on which console we're talking about as well. Best my waifu uh, Tie between a Willish Nemesis and Pele. Do you think Amaterasu should have a blinding effect on one of her abilities because of her theme? Maybe. I think it's interesting. I think if her three had a short, like semi-blind, like Ra, but way shorter and just maybe like half the level, that would be understandable. It would be fair, along with the silence. Uh, I think that wouldn't be too bad. I'd like it. Are you going to play Smite on Switch? I'm definitely going to try it out. I don't know if I'll play it in the long run, but I'm definitely going to try it. What do you think of Nike? Does she need a rework or just some buffs? I think just some buffs or maybe one ability reworked. 
you think a tank meta will come back in season six? It very well might. And if it does, that could be awkward. With the changes to solo, do you think assassins will be more viable in solo? Yes, some of them, like for example, Thanatos. What do you think is your role in the smart community? This is interesting. It's very hard to like pinpoint that. I think I'm a bit of, um, well, primarily obviously an info pool, I suppose, but also, I guess, a, a messenger of sorts, like bridging the grab, bridging the grab, bridging the gap between like the casual scene and, and the pro scene sometimes. Like I myself having a conversation with a pro, learning from them why something is the way it is and then translating that over uh, for the more casual scene, like making it like bite-sized information basically, or sometimes not even in, in talk with a pro player, sometimes just figuring things out myself, uh, just going through the numbers and, and looking what's going on over there. But then obviously outside of that, also just looking at, at numbers by themselves, looking at statistics, looking at that kind of stuff. The, the dirty math work that no one else wants to do, but what you'd like to hear the outcome out. I think I do a lot of that as well. And yeah, outside of that, I was just... Just um, a known member of the community at this point. Like I used to, I used to say, you know, I'm just another guy. But while that is still my perspective, I'm still just another guy. It's kind of hard to just keep that attitude when you get recognized. Literally at this point, pretty much every game. Like even though I don't use Duke Sloth as my in-game name, it's just like sometimes you just want to be a bit incognito, and it's just not happening anymore. So it's kind of hard to like really acknowledge where you are and, and who you are as such, but I I don't really mind too much, like, I'm, I'm just there, I'm just somewhere in between, like, not on the low end, not on the super high end, just, just somewhere in the middle and willing to, to do the, the footwork, uh, willing to, or I think, I think one of my, my strengths is really just to convey information, as much as I'm stumbling here right now, uh, convey information in a way that makes it interesting enough to listen to, thanks thanks to the genetics of my voice, that obviously helps as well, but at the same time also uh, is able to summarize something in an informative way which kind of reaches most levels of the audience. Like, of course, I will not appeal to a super new player with the entire terminology that I'm using at this point, unless they start with a particular videos that are for absolute beginners, and I'm not gonna appeal to a pro player uh, most of the time, at least, they, they would more watch something out of interest in a particular conversation, maybe, but um, because they either have this information from their coaches anyways or are simply not interested in it. So, yeah, I, I reached the rest. I, I reached the, the other 80%, I think, more or less. Not saying everyone likes me or everyone enjoys my content, but I think that's kind of my role. Where do you think Loki will be in the meta after his nurse? Probably... Well, still, definitely sub sub A tier uh, for for most context. Uh, on on a more casual level, it's very hard to say because he's always been super strong there in comparison. So really, I I don't know what where he'll be in comparison there. Does Najan need a nerf? Um, I don't think so. Maybe maybe with the uh, solo changes, but not right now. If Loki needs to move most of his frustration to play against, who do you think the new Bronx will uh, the new Loki will be according to Bronx players? I think that would be Ao Kuang. He used to be the new Loki a while ago anyways, and with the changes especially, I think that will be Ao Kuang again. Scorpion or Sub-Zero? That's hard. I had some time to think about that the last time, and I'm still not quite sure. I, I think I'm gonna like, just like by a little bit give it to Scorpion, but it also depends on the design. Like there's various iterations of both, so yeah. And And, in, in some ways, sub is a lot more badass, so... Yeah. What guards would you like to see after the announced roster? Um, I would like to see... But I don't really know that much about the guards in mythology outside of the ones that are like already in the game, that I inform myself about, so it's like... I would like to see... The Four Horsemen still, I think the Four Horsemen are really cool. And I would also like to see Pele Sister, now that somebody made a concept for her, which looked really cool. Just water pilly, basically. That that just looked really cool, so I, I want it. Don't you think healing mages like Afro Halachanga need a buff to be more strong in the early game? Well, they are designed to have a strong late game, not a strong early. It's kind of like the, the reverse Thanatos. 
Uh, again, I would say here we, it depends on what happens next season, though. I don't see them being very strong necessarily. Do you like 21 Savage's new album? I haven't listened to it, but probably not. Probably not, because it hasn't been my style in the past, so I doubt it. It's got to be now. How tall are you and are you tall than Mithimu? I am actually not sure from the top of my head how tall Mithimu is. I think I have a picture with him somewhere. Uh, I think I'm taller than him, if I recall correctly. I am 185, 1 meter 85. So, yeah. Typical German height, I guess. I'm just going to quickly look if there's any, any question that I haven't answered that just came in, maybe. It's just the last one. But so far... It does not look like it. Oh, never mind. There are more questions. Ooh. Okay. What are your thoughts on a character that could break the boundaries on a capped stat? For example, like Hunter, they could go past the 2.5 attack speed but lose power for every amount, of amount you go over. I don't think it's worth it. I think uh, that would just make them like too gimmicky because they lose stats in return, so it's not really worth investing into it. And it would also be very hard to code and glitch out the game. Would an app that updates the recommended builds for all gods be something useful? Absolutely, but the problem is finding someone who re like frequently updates it, because that I, I can. That's why I prefer to make like you know a video, and renew it every now and then, because builds change so much that it's really hard to keep track of all of them. And then some people will still be out ha unhappy with the outcome because they built something else. Ideal is a Nami build. Oof. Probably. I mean, with the next patches and everything, changes to crit, it's probably like, yeah, yeah. Devil's, Devil's Warrior Tabai, I think, on Izanami, X, uh, and then Triple Crit, I would guess. And then maybe, I don't know if Quadra Crit is worth it by selling boots. Maybe, maybe a power item last. Hard to say. Or you could go the Transcendence route and just get Bloodforge Light game if you want to get the most of it, but yeah, nah, I can't think of that like from the top of my head because I really don't play Zanami. I would just go with a default Hunter build. Can you please make a guide for every role when season 6 uh, comes around? Love you and teach good luck. Absolutely, thank you. Uh, yes, that can most certainly be done. Might be a bit delayed because there's going to be a lot going on for me around that time as well, but I will most definitely try at least. And with that, we are done with all the questions. Again, thank you so much for 90,000 subscribers as well. If you haven't subscribed yet, there's your button to do that. Because we're getting closer to 100,000 and, you know, we want to get there. So, yeah, just help me out here. Yeah, sorry for the, I guess, bland background. Like I said, a lot to do today. And I will see you for the patch notes tomorrow, hopefully. And with that, again, thank you very much for watching. Duke Sloth, out. <laughs>